This episode of A Hero's Journey podcast is brought to you by JPS Computers right out of Oregon, SMP Inc. right here in Las Vegas, and to all the Rock Rage Radio listeners out there, as they say, we are everywhere. And I want to bring this, this is actually a special edition. This is round two. There's so many stories. We, I mean, like off camera, it's been nuts. But <laughs> This episode is brought to you by West Coast Tattoo Parlor. There's two of them here, right here in Las Vegas. So, um, you know, Chase, what's crazy, bud, is that I started this show a year ago, uh -huh. and I just want to hear people's stories. Um, off camera, in the next room, I got asked, you know, where where did you come up with Hero's Journey podcast? Mm -hmm. Was it was it um, uh, jo Joseph, Joseph Campbell? Campbell. Right. And uh -huh. I, thank mm -hmm. you. And I was like, no, I was actually in my kitchen. And I said, if I ever had a podcast, this is what it'd be because we each wake up the hero of our own story. Mm -hmm. And a buddy of mine went, dude, there's a book. Joseph Campbell wrote it. It's it's based on and he starts just sending me all of these videos like star wars stuff and Pirate and how and yeah, exactly how that. how we get into this so everybody has a story and and what i found out even through my own son through people close to me that that they thought they knew me or thought they knew my world or whatnot now they're diving into that and the interesting people and friends inspiring people that i have around me sharing their stories that connect and sometimes speak to that person on that day, which has been really special for me to know that my own son reached out to me and said, dad, I had no clue. And I've lost 70 pounds and he's ran a marathon and he's been doing all of these things based on the guests that I've had. And there are times when somebody is speaking to him and he said on the day that I needed to hear it. So if I'm reaching my own son, then that means there's a good chance I'm reaching somebody else out there. I, I'm not, but Chase and I put this together so that way our guests are reaching out to them and actually speaking to them. And so today I have five guests. Chase, this is the largest, like most chaotic room we've ever had. <laughs> I'd say so, yeah. I'd yeah, say so. there we go. There's five of us in here, and it's nuts because uh, the last guest we had on was a uh, was a holistic healer so it was really mellow and and it was just this is going to be the opposite i can just tell <laughs> it's going to get crazy um but <laughs> and say, saying that as val says yeah as val says i have to I my left fine. yeah i have to my left i just met you and i i i talked i didn't say anything but hello welcome thank you for being here uh, they call you raven you're a tattoo artist right here in Las Vegas at West Coast Tattoo Parlor. Um, and I'm going to go around the room and introduce everybody real quick. Uh, to Next to you is Frank DiMaggio as like the, the baseball player. I love I like it. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Thank you. And on, off camera, I said to you that you're just so soft-spoken when you get on the show. You just get all mellow and soft-spoken. But... It was really cool to see you I light like up. I like to hear everybody else. Talk, I know so, you listened. It was you know. it was great. You but, should hear him get mad. He yells like a banshee. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. You do. It's an Italian thing. <laughs> yeah, no. there you go. And and your better half right there next to you, <laughs> Valerie DiMaggio. Everybody, they, both the owners of West Coast Tattoo Parlor right here mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And we got into uh, a story. You know, the last time we sat down with you guys, and it was. It was interesting, a lot of fun, a lot of stuff has happened since then. So mm -hmm. it was like, let's come back. And this is sooner than I've ever had anybody back on the show. But Aww. it's because you, you're great. And you also brought me two beautiful young you ladies who are talented. From our other shop on Rainbow Boulevard. Exactly. Yes, Chi Chi, yes. welcome. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you guys are like Cher and Madonna. You know, that's <laughs> Chi Chi, Raven. I love it. So I want to get Before into Before you get going, yeah. we wanted to thank you, you know, since the last show, you brought in some guests to our to our shop. 
that which was we thought was super saliva. cool, man. And I, I we've been get, riding that yeah. way for a little bit, and we wanted to thank you for that because that was, you know, that's kind of who we want to be. You know, we, we, you know, and you see, we get along really well with people from my genre of music, just like you do. Yep. And um, when the, you feel at home, there's no nervousness. There's family. They have literally treated us like family since then. That's amazing. Gave I was. Ton I of still love, get man. messages. I was from texting them. him off the air, and for those of you out there, who don't know what we're talking about. Um, uh, I'm friends with Josie Scott uh, from Saliva, the lead singer. I met him a year ago, and it was in an interview. That's how we met. And the hair is standing up my arms because I was backstage, and I just did an interview with him. And I was nervous because I was doing it for radio. I had just started this, and I'd only done like six or seven uh, shows here, and I was doing it as a favor. Like, hey, will you do an interview for Rock Rage Radio? And I went, sure, I'll do that. Went back there. We went into it. And you can see the interview. It's like on uh, way back in like early teens of, you know, the show. And just look up Josie Scott. But it's only like 11 or 12 minutes long. He reunited with Saliva after 10 years. He took the stage. There was like 19,000 people there. Wow. Wow. It was a blast. But what was crazy was backstage. We get to talking. And he starts to tell me a story or why he got back into music and why he's doing this again and that he was getting to reunite with with his old band or his guitar player his best friend and to play you know these songs and i didn't know this at the time i only knew click click boom you know your disease i knew some of their songs and hero and there was one song uh, um a fall to pieces or no uh oh gosh what is it i love this song but i put it played it on loop um, but anyway, uh, I, I'm sharing this with him and he, he and I got emotional. We're crying in, in this interview. And from that moment on, we were, we're boys. We're like brothers and it's really crazy. So I drove out to LA last week or what is it? Two weeks ago now. Two weeks. Yeah. And on a Friday, we drove out that morning just to hang out with them all day, see the show. Uh, we had some really cool moments backstage, no cameras around, you know, just yeah. real talk. Yeah. And um, we found ourselves, you know, getting, you know, enjoying the night. He's playing the whiskey. It was packed. Then his PR lady goes, Brian, I've, um, we've, that's his sister. She just came in from Sacramento. He did the 23 and Me thing mm -hmm. and discovered he had a half sister, oh, like wow. in 2018. And this is the first time she's That's getting to see. Yeah. yeah. He, they have yeah. the same story. They were there talking about that, too. They both, like, found their sisters and all that. Right. So uh, he said, you know, it, no, she said, Jen said, it, do you have somewhere they can get a brother-sister tattoo while they're in Vegas? And I went, <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, yeah, I, so I, those people. I just got, got a guy. tattoo, you know, <laughs> at their place. I just had them on the show. I know the I know them, and I hit I hit Rob right away, who's mm -hmm. over at the Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, then I hit you. Oh, I was getting blown up seconds later. By, yeah, oh no, Rob was on me in two seconds. Yeah. This is like Valerie, he's saliva. And, and he was a, like, he was a true fan. Oh too. yeah, oh, he not and just Chris like, were yeah, really oh, big fans. Yeah. You're know, like me. Like I mean, I was you know I'm not I don't have a saliva T-shirt. Right. I know who they are. Right. And like I've been to many of their shows. Kind of deal. But he, like they he was love him. blown away. He was he was nervous. He was shaking. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. you, know, they, you know, they say never meet your heroes, but you know, for the guys that do the hero songs. Exactly. It's okay. And yeah. uh, perfect. Nice yeah. segue. Exactly. It, but it literally it was one of those things where you guys embraced them. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you went to the show. They I was there. Us. Yes, exactly. Oh, Backstage it was a sardi can and mm -hmm. they didn't yeah. kick anybody out. No. Everybody no. was we're all the like security was letting me other. do whatever I wanted. It was awesome. Yeah, he he was like, I know who you are. I don't know what that meant, but he let me do whatever I wanted, <laughs> so that was fine. Yeah. And then uh, he even let me go upstairs and try to get the count and all them. Yeah. And, um, Ricky Rocket. Well, I was, was trying there. to leave. Yeah, from Poison. Awesome. Well, I was Drummer trying to Poison. leave yeah. after the show. I was trying to leave, and then everybody wants to talk to him forever. And I'm like, my boys had been waiting all day. You know, like right. if they thought they were going to get him in the morning, then it was the afternoon, then it was six, For the then tattoo. it was like midnight. Right. Just they to do the tattoo yeah, yeah right they, they, were, they were hanging after. they were troopers they, they were, waited yeah. all, all day, day. all yeah. day i was there at your shop till 3 30 in the morning i know you I I everybody. stay up that late yeah. i never stay up that late they were there later than that till i think six 
Yeah. Oh, they stayed later. Yeah. I, and yeah. I got out of there. I was like, I'm tapping out. We left out. around when yeah, you we did. We, See we you, were at four. Yeah, we you were guys left, and I followed. So what? That's what's great is, and I want to get into that because tattoos are, are these all mean something to mm -hmm. me. Everything. Yeah. So you guys as tattoo artists get that opportunity to. It's not. Oh, just something something temporary. Mm -hmm. You're putting something on someone that means something to them most of the time. And even if it's in Vegas, they're coming out, they want to remember this moment that they're there with Absolutely. their friend. And and that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Be in the moment. Celebrating being in... life, death, exactly. friendships, evolution, paradigm, Make sure you talk into paradigm that. shifts. Exactly. That. So, so for sure. Cartoons. <laughs> People tell you, Cartoons. like, they come into the shop and they'll tell you their whole story. You know, that's... like a lot of them have like just wild backgrounds and they just are wanting to come in and talk and then everybody ends mm -hmm. up talking and sitting around and it, uh, it kind of like a, uh, you know, like a barbershop or something, you know, where everybody oh, sure. would come to hang out. That's what like, you know, happens over at the tattoo well, shop one all of, the time. One of my personal traits is what makes me happy is seeing other people happy. Right. And so it, I do this thing where I'll, I'll walk in a room and I'll socialize with everybody and I try to personalize myself to that person so they're more comfortable. And once I see that they're enjoying themselves, you know, it, I can relax and enjoy myself. And I do that with tattooing now. So, you know, I, I'm able to have someone walk through that door and I can make something completely custom or, you know, help guide them in the right direction. And by the end of it, they're thanking me, you know, they're, they're having a great experience. And that just means the world to me. That's exciting. Yeah. So it's, it's really totally exciting. worth all the bullshit she has to deal with. Oh, my God. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of craziness. <laughs> There's a lot of artists that don't have a, they won't have a conversation with you while they're doing it. You mm -hmm. know, they're, they're, they're so into their thing, you know, so, Hey, what do I do to take care of this after, uh, soap and water? Treat, Not treat like, Hey, treat, here's treat what I do. Your client, yeah. how, how you yeah. want to be treated, right. you know, how comfortable would you be when someone just kind of gives you the, you know, bombastic side eye and just doesn't really have a whole conversation with you make it right. personable. Yeah. And they're digging into your body. So you might as well yeah. have a conversation with them. So how yeah. long you been doing this then? So I actually just graduated and got my independent license. I just uh, finished my apprenticeship. Congratulations. So, thank you. so it's been about yeah. a year and a half. Okay. About She's seven already months, amazing. Seven months physically tattooing. Yeah, it's been going really, really good. That's awesome. I'm excited. It's a, man, why, it's why? a man's world, man. It's tough for women in this this industry. Well, really me and her were talking, we were just about, talking about that. I think that's a misconception. I, I was very fortunate with the last shop that I was at when I started my apprenticeship. Um, another shop here in Vegas. I traveled around the U.S. going to villain art shows. And it's the tattoo conventions. And it's a really cool experience because you get to see all the females coming into the industry, like if they're with the FK Iron booth and it's just these amazing females from all over the world sponsored by these big these big brands and there's, it's not male dominated anymore. It's becoming That's so awesome. even and I just see a lot of really cool opportunities for everybody of all sexes across the board. So I was brought into the tattoo world by, um, I own a clothing line called Red Chapter Clothing with a guy named Mark Palmer, his brother, Ryan Palmer. And they used to be at all the tattoo conventions, like mm -hmm. in Pomona, like it, it just all over the, all over like California. Mm -hmm. They would go to these tattoo conventions because Mark is famous for stuff like that. That's an ambigram. Oh, the that flip. Says, yeah, breathe, oh, music. Oh, I love that. Rock and roll, rock and roll. I've got a karma tattoo around my oh. shoulder. So. We turned that into a clothing line, but I would go when before starting the brand, I watched all of these people and all of these artists. And he had some of these, uh, he had two artists from a TV show that would sit and tattoo them, tattoo his work in their booth. And you know, like we had the biggest booth. I say mm -hmm. we, I didn't know, I, mean, I just was getting to know them then mm -hmm. before I started the brand with them and was just blown away. They were in the center because he would sit, someone could walk up and give him two names. You could do it on the flyer, like right now. And he can tell you yes or no, give it a six to 10 or five to 10, like how good it's gonna look. And he can draw it. He never even mm -hmm. has to flip the paper upside down. He's, they call him Mr. Upside Down on social media. Is he dyslexic? No. Oh. Doesn't, he do the, doesn't he just do that for free and then post them he's doing that on his instagram he's doing that now like that. yeah it's getting millions of views yeah. millions and we couldn't figure out how to promote the brand mm -hmm. because only the tattoo industry understood who he was and people with his tattoos but like jordan farmer we had all these celebrities that had his work 
but he doesn't tattoo you, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so I would go in, uh, most of my tattoos have been for free. I'd walk into places and they would freak out that they're getting to meet him. And then he's signing books to them and they're tattooing me for cool. free because he doesn't have any tattoos. Um, and, wow. But he's famous for doing this. So anyway, I was introduced to that world and I, the culture and all of that mm -hmm. for years. And then I would walk around talking about him and people always thought it was like a computer and it wasn't. But we also started the brand where we were making him do letter combinations so that way we could put it in to a machine but I mean, online. Also, just the, on that note of you kept talking to people about him, the word mm -hmm. of mouth. That's, mm -hmm. that's one you know, easy Huge. way of help self-promoting your friends, all, anything that they're doing for art. Just get the word around. Yeah, that's why we're here. Get the word around. How long you've been to Five tattoo? years. Five years. Yeah. Five long and years. so how long have you been with uh, West Coast? I just started yeah. with them actually this mm -hmm. month. She really? just started, yeah. yeah. Well, welcome. She does really good Thank work you. too. I saw your work. Thank it's you. awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I just, as a woman in the industry, I would have to say it's not, it's not hard. People are nice to you, but um, I would say clothing choices are important as a woman because it's very easy to be stared at in a shop full of men. You know, mm. I would say that's probably just the hardest thing as a woman. It's not ridiculously um, difficult, but it can be kind of annoying just trying to like do good art and constantly almost be a distraction at the right. same time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've experienced that, but I have to annoying. watch my, my boobs when I'm trying to like tattoo someone and their hands out and I'm just like, sorry, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're just there holding my boob and I'm like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> But for it. sure, you definitely be... clothing choices. Can't wear skirts because you want to just draw and be all sprawled out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You just have clothing to be choices. like hyper aware mm -hmm. for sure. And I don't think a lot of men understand that aspect of it mm -hmm. for sure. See, I've had so, issues where like the guys will like get angry that I'm a woman owner and they'll like let you know, you know, like I've actually had that happen. I've had a couple of them. I mean, what, the one guy even went to you the one of uh, one time. Uh, what do we say? Oh, what if it, she's not going to listen, who do I have to talk to? Yeah, because I would wow. not pick his paint <laughs> colors that he wanted because they already had spent like we were redoing. Right. Yeah, it was an artist and uh, we were redoing the whole place. And the guy was just mm -hmm. not having it with the coloring. Yeah, yeah I, I was like, the, I'm, I'm not comfortable I with spent this. hundreds of dollars. <laughs> listen, I spent hundreds of dollars on that paint. He wanted to change it. And he had just come in like two days prior. And then we had all collectively picked these colors and he is just having a meltdown because he can't have the colors he wants. <laughs> takes this one, takes this one, and takes him to a tattoo parlor to show him what an amazing, you know, look this pure green. This is green. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like it's stupid. I'm like, I don't want After it. After she was already like, no. After I already said no, I was like, no. And so yeah. then he's going to Chi Chi, be like, who do we go to to go over her head? And I'm just like, it's me. Yeah, I'm it's the my, owner. I don't like, I like the drama. Yeah. No, I don't I'm want sorry. anything to do with yeah. anything. This one, oh no, but poor Chi Chi, she gets blamed for everything. She's not involved in anything. I'm telling you, I have cameras. I know everything going on. And this girl, like, if they go out and they're getting fired and something's going wrong, somehow it's Chi Chi did it or Chi Chi. I'm just the, like, <laughs> <laughs> no. There's one guy. There's one guy where she literally gave him. She was being a good person, like no good deed goes unpunished, right? So she's being a good person, letting him have like one of her her uh, clients right because she already had, I had three of them so i gave one artist one one artist the other oh, wow. didn't have any because she's a nice person you know i was like mm -hmm. i'm not just gonna eat myself let's have the shop eat too kind of thing yeah you so know, she's the nice, i might need it one day she's yeah. a nice human being so It'll anyways this guy decides to take it and then he takes all the money he doesn't do a drop nothing and so i do my drop the other guy does his job and i catch it like, immediately did, did he do a drop wow and he did it i'm very quick if i'm getting somebody's means touching my money, the money. Yeah, I, the I, money. I yeah. That, yeah. yeah and so then he said no she she stole the money and i'm just like i i can't but i can't when she could cameras. see i only cash out my person the other guy cashed out his person why would i cash out i watched him do it if you did wow. the tattoo <laughs> wow. i watched him do it but look yeah. what you came into <laughs> i kind of like it though because i just get to listen the whole time no I know. Like, <laughs> yeah it's like tv so w i gotta ask it real quick um what made you go i'm gonna be a tattoo artist my friend passed away and um, he always inspired me just like, you need to do something and you're really good at art, so you need to do something. And it took his passing 
um, because he he struggled with addiction, alcoholism. Um, It took his passing for me to realize that I I do need to do something. And I realized that I was kind of like putting myself in a room. Sorry, I'm getting choked up. uh, In a room, in a a hole. And um, I wasn't being social at all. And it's weird to say, and I'm not trying to say that art is not amazing and that's why I'm doing this, but it's really talking to people that like, it's something I never did before until my friend passed. And now like I get to meet someone new every mm-hmm. single time I'm tattooing. And you know this. Like, oh yeah, this it's is, cathartic. It's magical yeah. almost. I love that. Thank you. Absolutely. And you're honoring your friend, which is incredible. And you're, and you're immor- immortalizing, immortalizing? Like, is that yeah. the right word? Now I am. Look at <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's the thing. And you are. And you you get to share that. But he also, he's helped you mm-hmm. from saying that. You don't know the things that somebody's going to say to you in a day that will have an impact on you. Yep. Um, I, I know this for a fact with Chase. Chase is my producer on the show. Chase, this is, you and I have become friends over the past year. And he has watched people come in and he he gets he does shows every day and something somebody says has inspired him he rides bikes i rode my harley because it's a nice day out and i hit my boy up chase and i go i want to see your weather rider what's that fair weather no i ride all the time bro (laughs) yeah i i ride all the time i ride more than yeah the guys you used to be a biker shut up yeah but but at the end of the day it's it's from everything there's an influence that i've had on chase and there's an influence he's had on me and things that he's not aware of that his work ethic and Mm -hmm. and how he his love for music he's a he's an opera singer and, is a reminder and leather to me. Craftsmanship. Oh, oh dude, and yeah, leather new. crafts, yes. <laughs> and that's, that. but that's new. But is the that thing, purple leather? Yeah. I knew about is, that yeah. too. I knew it. I yeah. knew that you were a Renaissance person. But <laughs> I did. Did I not call yeah. it immediately? I had it. But that little thing can change and inspire a paradigm shift in somebody. That's what I'm saying. Something that where you're having all this resistance, things aren't just working out in life, and you're just like, and there's there's this motivational video that my dad sent me a while ago, and it's this uh, like. A high up person in the naval military and he's just giving like a graduating speech or something and he's like don't be a sugar cookie and it's what it's a term when they call people who are in like their their navy training and they're covered in sand and they're just super cold and you're just like why me why am i going through this why 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 but it's the whole principle and it, it's just hitting that that mental change and shifting your perspective instead of you know you know, why is this happening? So how can I harness and utilize this to become better? How am I going to use this and, and do good with this? And it can, a word somebody can say, something, a topic of conversation can completely change someone's perspective and help them move into something different. But that goes with the Joseph Campbell right. and, you know, that hero's journey and, and all the principles of going through that paradigm shift to your self-evolution and everything. And you have to have mentors when you start off in the tattoo industry Mm -hmm. you have to have somebody that you're watching it's a new so you're an artist Mm -hmm. right you guys do art and you knew you could do art your friend knew you could do art right but to take it to the next level Mm -hmm. and that's you had to step into the unknown this new adventure i'm going to do this and now that not only did you discover that i used to wait tables and the thing that i miss about waiting tables was all the people I would meet throughout the day and all these conversations I would have that would inspire me. But back to, you know, you're stepping into Mm -hmm. and now somebody is mentoring you through this new adventure, this new journey, and there's going to be struggles and ups and downs and they've been there. You can't cry in the shop. Yeah. (laughs) You can't cry in the shop. (laughs) But they're, they're, you know, they've made mistakes and they're trying to, Mm -hmm. Hey, don't do this because this, well, you know, this is what happens. There's a, this one quick story where I was, uh, when I was an apprentice in one of the first shops I was at, I would always get so upset at this one artist when every time I was doing my line work, he would come and shake the table and just say earthquake. Oh my gosh. And I, and I had to start over until one day after like the seventh or eighth time over a couple weeks that he was doing that, I picked up my pencil 
And it dawned on me that whoever is in my chair and I'm tattooing, I can't, if they sneeze, if they fart, if they have a twitch, if they, whatever, it's up to me instead of having to start over because I can't on no. a tattoo to lift up he my machine. Mr. Miyagi. I, my oh. God, I was so upset. Together. I was so upset, but I had that light bulb and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Did I you go it. thank him after? No, I didn't. But he knows. <laughs> he knows. Well, because he knows because I lifted up my pencil and that's all. It, it goes without saying, I feel, you know, but I definitely, that was like a, a good highlight right. moment of that for sure. Yeah. That, that understanding and... He didn't. He didn't tell you. Mm -mm. He didn't say. But that was the whole point. Right. That was. The whole, it was only up for me to kind of get it. He wasn't right. going to give me the answer. He wasn't going to explain his reasoning. You know. And I think it. It just means more that I didn't have to have that conversation. But I took that tool, and what I've learned, and I use it every day. She is. I want to just say this about Chi Chi. She is like the. She's such a professional. She's such a hardworking human being. Thank you. And like. Listen, I would have like went down in flames without Chi Chi because like I had to go through a th few cycles of, uh, you know, some artists because, you know, yeah. they have like some issues and I can't deal with them <laughs> and you know, I need them to leave. So um, but Chi Chi's been there like the whole time, always like holding it down. Oh, there's been days she'd go do 12 hour days. I mean, and she was just like really, you know, trying to help me stay open mm -hmm. and, and right. try to help the situation when nobody else would help me. I, like, she's an amazing human being. You have two locations. Yeah, Rainbow okay. Boulevard and uh, Las Vegas Boulevard. When you say Rainbow, Rainbow and what? Um, Russell. Dewey, yeah. Rainbow, I would say, Russell. like, Russell, Right across Dewey. from Spring Valley Hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Spring Valley, okay. And then I've, I've been to the one on Las Vegas, yeah. which is, like, it's tucked away, you know, mm -hmm. it's... You wouldn't it's even what, know it's you there. You wouldn't know. Yeah, People no find idea. It, they yeah, they do. It. It's but never... you know, the old school. If you've been around for a while, mm -hmm. you remember the tattoo parlors were down alleys and back down stairs and around corners and mm -hmm. one <laughs> flashing light. You know, they were dirty, scary. You know, right. hardcore places where you'd run into the, like the dregs of society. Right. But that's different now. It's they're in strip malls and shopping malls and right. You know, but that that one over in Las casinos, Vegas Boulevard is in casino. Right. Yeah. yeah, the one on Las Vegas Boulevard. You walk in and you get a good vibe when you walk in. You just right. it's good, good energy mm -hmm. in there, and they yeah. all love each other. You They're, know, like they all are. It's like a family in it's there. Not it's not too cool for itself. No, and you have a lot of Elvis and Mar Marilyn Monroe in there, and I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. Which is my band, Elvis Monroe. That's why there's so much. I love her to give you pictures. Elvis. You should have taken one. I took one. Did I took you? the puzzle one. Oh yeah. You've given me so much stuff. I'm like, I can't. No, stop. Stop. I love. You, you loved you know, it, so I wanted you to no, have it. I appreciate it. it. I right. was I was just admiring. Rainbow is more of a clean, it. eclectic, quiet, you know, mm -hmm. comfortable, not over. And that's where you two work, look, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Rainbow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm it's really a, looking it's forward to the working calmer with Raymond. Yeah. It's a we rain. yet to work. Together. We haven't really had a whole lot of days where we've worked together. There's been a, just a lot of personal things for us both going on, but we've had a one official day the other day and it was a nice day so oh, cool. looking forward to all of our, our times together we basically had to kind of we're redoing rainbow we had okay. to make a lot of changes and mm -hmm. we brought in a whole new crew and uh really good guys we have blanco he's an influencer um we have uh jamie that we just new got guy. new mm -hmm. guy today he started we have raven we have chi chi you know, like uh, we're we're starting out with, and th actually we have a new guy coming from Hawaii because his oh, yeah. shop yeah. burned down. His name's Eric. He lost his shop and his home in the Maui oh. fires. Both of them burned, and he's coming out uh, next week. We gave him a spot. You know, so, so he'll be with us for the yeah. So if you want to support Hawaii without knowing now how to support Hawaii, this guy is in the, and his name yeah. again is his Eric. Eric. Okay, and yeah. Eric's at the Rainbow at the location. Rainbow. He'll be, he'll, the Rainbow he'll be location. starting yeah. next week. Yeah, he kind of like lost everything, so we really want to help yeah. him out as much we can. New home base for now. Yeah, That's amazing. yeah. Like I mean, he has no. He burned down. You no, know, somebody. I wonder. Got it, I wonder him. if he tattoos like. They, mm. no, they it's, it's do his like work is sick. Yeah. His work you know? is sick. I yeah, saw his it. His work's amazing. I was going to take him no matter what it looked like because, you know, of the situation. But right. when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow. Like, it, he's, he's really talented. Amazing. Very good. Like, mm -hmm. amazing. Been doing it for a long time. Do you have a specialty? I do. Um, I really love illustrative. And the best way to describe what that is is if you've read any of the Winnie the Pooh books. Okay. Um, there's a lot of depth to it. It looks like a cartoon, sort of. But. It's almost like a deep, like if you imagine a forest and then grass and maybe mushrooms up front and then maybe Winnie the Pooh and it's yellow and it's green. And um, I would say 
almost like creepy storybook art is my favorite. Love oh my that. Gosh. I really like fine line as well. And um, I mostly tattoo women. Like I, I haven't meant for that to be the case, but women really like my art. So that's, this is true. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. Well, mm -hmm. you guys have influenced my girl. Nicole went from wanting to get <laughs> a me. just our puppy's name on her wrist. And then it's coming up uh, uh, by the time this one airs. It had yeah, just Monday. passed on Sunday, October 1. Is that Sunday? Yeah, <gasps> yeah it's yeah, Sunday. It's and that's oh. that's how we met. Yeah. And um, it, for those of you listening mm -hmm. out there, don't know what I'm talking about. October 1 was a shooting here in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Um, Nicole, who is the best thing that's ever happened to me, happened on the worst day that could have happened for us and the people around us. And people had it worse than we did. But she was a girl I grabbed in front of me with her friends. And then um, I led them to a refrigerator and then over a wall. And they helped me put people over the wall. He's a hero. And then I, I saved led up people out by people. foot. I'm and not from here. I'm, I'm from Florida. But somebody I, I know of recently told me and shared a story about how they were bartending that event oh, yeah. and, and I what had a they had to go through yep. and just hearing that personal story instead mm -hmm. of just reading it you know that's just insane what you guys all went through I think they're doing we were on the phone with you that night too weren't we we were on the phone with you that was yeah yeah frank yeah, that, was, that was horrifying memorial this sunday for the new um the new garden really at 10 o'clock in the morning the mayor's reading all the names wow the, they do that every year the they victims. asked me to perform uh the song i, call, I wrote called the fight yeah. for it last year and um we weren't around for the five-year anniversary and even if i was i just yeah it's a tough thing to uh like it doesn't define me mm -hmm. or her but but what i'm saying is she wanted to get just a small tattoo of the date mm -hmm. we'll do it for her. right no but here's the thing it went from that to now she wants to sleep. I'm like, <laughs> yeah! what? I swear good for her she though. Came in, for her. She came in that night. She I did think, with with Josie, yeah. uh, uh, Kendra, his she, wife. She, she and... never, she never wanted a tattoo at all. And I said, just get one. And she goes, well, it has to be hidden. So she got the little Mickey Mouse thing behind her hairline. Right. And I don't now, even think I've seen that. Now she's getting a full back piece. Oh, wow. yeah. there you go. It's like, it's oh yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. I'm doing so, a whole so. back. Piece. May I ask? Please. Um, what were you? I, this is kind of like turning into a flip thing. No, like, it's okay. I'm now the leader of the show, <laughs> yeah, guys. I love um, it. What were you feeling in that moment when you knew, okay, like something's going on? This is October mm -hmm. 1st. Like, was it full adrenaline or? what what was in that? what when everything was starting to go down yeah i had just come from backstage and um <clears throat> i played the first year so this is year three i'd been there every year and i went there on friday to see a friend but we had come from backstage and i had walked up and i'd just taken a photo with a fan from alaska and his friend and then when everything started to happen it didn't compute that that's what was going on and i thought there's fireworks going on. Oh, That's wow. what I first thought. Then I saw chaos in front of us, and then people started running at us. And oh. my bandmate said, grab me by the shoulder, and he said, run. And at that point, he got hit in the arm. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh. And you could hear it just, right? And I, I went two steps with him and then came back, and I looked, and... Um, the girl that was standing in front of me and a friend were standing there frozen. And I reached out and grabbed her hand. And I said, follow me, come on. And I started weaving her Good on you. through the crowd that was running this way. But when I looked back, Ben wasn't there. He had been trampled. <gasps> He'd been ran over. Cause there was that many people. You're the one who got shot. Yeah, he, oh. he it, <gasps> grazed. He just grazed his arm. And, um, and so, and, and, there's so much more and I, uh, I I'd go into it, but, but what I was thinking the moment I grabbed her hand and I said this so many times, I, I've done hundreds of interviews around the world and our love story has been told on talk shows and whatever, but I like, I'm an ex athlete and it was weird because it was like all of a sudden everything slowed down and my focus was these two. Mm -hmm. did, did your ears ring from the time it started? Did you feel an e a ringing and a, and a deafness? 
No. Everything it was going. literally just everything just slowed down for me and I was like clearing corners and and I had no idea people were following me. Yeah. And and I was doing things methodically and purpose like moving Back at a pace forth, of right. like just putting people lifting if they wanted my help I helped them. Assess the situation. Yeah, telling people to stay yeah. down, be quiet, um trying to you know, figure out, okay, what's going on? And then there were moments of, I'm not gonna die here. Like when I heard gunfire, when I opened the door and it was right there. And it was like, I made a video for my family. I started to make oh. it and this kid interviewed, I mean, he interrupts it by throwing rock fingers cause he's blackout drunk. And he's, he doesn't know what's going oh on. My he's God. pounding oh on my the walls God. or whatever. So I stop it and I'm like- He's just, he can't, he's just no. not there. And we're taking, the, Nicole was taking care of the other Nicole, there were two Nicoles, uh -huh. and she was asking the girl, what's your name, where are you from, trying to get her to stop screaming, because I'm trying to keep everybody quiet I can't imagine. and down. Oh. And then there are people who have told me, they've come out and said, you put me over the wall, you led me out by foot, you, I followed you, and I couldn't go in the truck. My husband had a whatever, and we wanted to see what was coming, so we hid behind the tires. Um, just so many different things, but I was not scared to answer your question until I got home and it was three. Well, actually I was, I, I guess I went Facebook live because Ben said his phone was blowing up, go Facebook live and let everybody know that we're okay. That yeah. we're, yeah, he's I somewhere I, you saw it and yeah. you called me. Reach everybody but at once kind of exactly, thing. Cause my phone was about to, I had plugged it in a wall after I walked 13 people holding their hands after I got one group out and Nicole and Nicole to their parents, I wasn't leaving this other group that when they all saw me at being in a band, half the people thought, like, it's like they knew, they thought they knew me or somebody familiar to them. So they're running to me of with course. blood on them and dirt. And so I'm huddling them up around machines in a casino. And then I hit them in a re restaurant when there was screaming and gunfire, wow. uh, the uh, fear of. Amazing. So then I walked them down the airport to two miles to uh, a grocery store where somebody picked us up in a truck and loaded up the truck and took to a house. And then I went Facebook Live. But I guess on Facebook Live, I was white as a ghost. And that's the thing you yeah. saw. And that the realization of over my shoulder, the TV is saying people were dying and all mm -hmm. that. And I saw people, so I knew that. But what it was, and then when I got home, a friend came and picked me up, took me home, drops me off, and I walk in my door, and my phone just keeps ringing. And and it was news people because of the Facebook thing. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, well, especially because no you performed. Right. No, I didn't perform. Oh, no, Not didn't. that year. Oh, okay. I performed the first year. But my what was crazy was my um, my dad, I had did, did a phone interview with CNN, and, and they asked me if I had a video, and I, I was like, it's like 12 seconds long. I sent it to you, and I sent it to him. And my dad walks out and he's looking across from me and I wear my dad's dog tag, that. right? I really saw that on CNN. Yeah. And, and so I'm sitting there at three in the morning and I'm telling my dad what happened. And he said, were you scared? And I said, no. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I just start shaking mm -hmm. and I start crying because I, that reality, I realized yep. that, yeah, like what I did I was like, Super what demon. the fuck was I thinking? That's what was going on because That's I the reality of what I would remember being pulled down. My Nicole now pulled me down. I'm telling everybody what to do and I'm standing there like I'm bulletproof mm -hmm. and she had to pull me down and make sure that I, because I was focused on- We're on adrenaline. No, well, I was focused. No, it wasn't no? even adrenaline. I swear to you, I wasn't scared. I wasn't, just assessing I was, I was trying to work. Okay. Here's where we are. That's what I'm going to do. This one, there was oh. only a moment of, I'm not going to die here. Okay. This is what I'm going to do now. It's when I got home that it all like mm -hmm. came out. And then when I did interviews, I did some interviews around the world. I was up from Sunday at, when I got there, I was up at, you know, 11 o'clock on Sunday. I get there at three. This happens at night. I'm up all night. Because now news crews are showing up my door and they're doing, they're fighting outside my house, outside my place, saying who got there first, trying How to do interviews. How did you feel about that? How the, the, just the, 
invasiveness of of the news crews and you're trying to calm down and assess your I, situation and for me it was weird because it was a positive thing mm -hmm. for my bandmate it wasn't it was his story was completely different and so i didn't go to bed until tuesday night at nine o'clock wow i was just doing interviews through that whole time so yeah. there were a couple of moments i had breakdowns from people that were um that were just strangers. Mm -hmm. uh, this big man come, gets up off blackjack table and I'm coming from just grabbing some water and walking through a casino and I'm having to, sorry, having to go to another place and it turned into him walking up and going, hey, you're that guy. And he reaches out and shakes my hand and said, you did good. And I started crying. And I'm like, his guy's like six, five, six, six. And I'm hugging a total stranger. And I get outside after I'm telling him I'm sorry and I get outside and walk across the street and this little Indian lady with a cane said, you know, I'm proud of you. Total stranger, mm -hmm. you know, and I start crying again and then I'm running across the street and, and news crews see me and they're running across the street, putting cameras in my face and I'm walking and crying yeah. and, and I'm telling them I'm not going to say anything, but they're just filming me crying. And I'm going to another interview. I'm trying to clean myself up. And because whenever I said no, they would just show up anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, but the they thing was, there would always be one or two really nice people who were good at their job mm -hmm. that would say, people need to hear your story. They, this needs to be shared. I completely get that. So, because there was so much tragic stuff, this is, this story needs to be heard so please don't Normalize stop it. yeah no we'll just please don't stop sharing this positive thing that that came mm -hmm. from something so bad um because all they're hearing is the scary stuff yeah. but that's a long-winded answer to your question and that you know um that was beautiful it yeah. was no, but thank you but but it's like literally i would do it over and over again but i also said i would trade that day right for the and take the risk of not meeting Nicole because I know that I would meet her. Yep. To, I would trade all that and like get, reverse it all and give everybody all mm -hmm. that to to take the chance because I know that she is meant for me, that we're meant to be together so we would meet each other. And it didn't have to be in that situation. But in this plane, this universe, whatever it is, that's the way this played out. And um and I don't, the reasoning of it all, whatever they can come up with, make up, doesn't matter because it doesn't change what happened. It doesn't bring all those people back. It doesn't, it, the tragedy that everybody went through. Mine was positive, meaning I don't have a PTSD moment from it. It's weird. And I think it's because I had focus. Mm -hmm. As I grabbed her hand and I looked her in the eyes and said, look at me, look at me stay with me and even though you're hearing bullets splatting on the pavement hitting the metal all around us and it felt like we weren't moving very fast it didn't change that you know like didn't change how i was going to do this mm -hmm. you know how i was gonna you know get through this with her and her friend and then come to find out all the people that actually followed me and listen to what I was saying. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what happened to that girl? I didn't put over the fence. You let her out by foot. I'm like, what? Her and her man. And then this older woman as well, who came out and said, no, you, I was holding their hands and we followed you and I led them out by foot. But we're running, the nightmares that I have are running past people on the ground who were somebody's brother, sister, family member, whatever. And I didn't stop. That's the nightmares I have. Because I'm you I'm six could. three. I'm a big guy. I could have picked somebody up and carried them. And You're one person. but I didn't know honestly, I didn't know what was I didn't know where it was coming from, mm -hmm. what was happening. I didn't know. And I made a promise. I said, I'm gonna get you out. And I did. And you did. But and 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 that's the part that I have to hold on to because if I don't that's i have the nightmares i seriously have the nightmares of i watched the guy who was shot right in the sternum and his friend on top of him crying trying to breathe life into him uh guy shot 
in the passenger seat of the car with all these people hiding behind it. And as we're running past it, I'm telling them to run into the dark, mm -hmm. you know, run towards the dark. So I don't mean to get in on that. That's not we're what this was about, fine. but it's no. coming up October one. This, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. this one over there just passed. And, and the thing was, I didn't know how to deal with that last year being the five year anniversary. And, and most of the time, October one is, yeah, it's that day. But, but February 10th was a day that she flew out when I was out on tour with three doors down and she flew out to Chicago and got off the, the shuttle bus in front of my tour bus. And we said, I love you. And we've been Aww, together ever since. So, that. so that, you know, we have that and it's snowing. You like it was out it. of a movie, you, you know, you deserve such goodness. No, thank like, you. I can't say, I don't say that about a lot of people. Thanks. You deserve nothing but the best. You're a very good human being. Thank you. No worries. But, 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 so I didn't know how to deal with that last year. <laughs> and the way I did was, uh, I remember sitting, I got hired to write songs for this band and I was on their tour bus and we were parked in Nashville by a lake and I had come up with some, some stuff on guitar. And, uh, last year I didn't know where that melody, what it was for, mm -hmm. but the bus driver's like, Oh, you writing that for them? I'm like, Nope, this one's mine. And I knew that as an artist, I knew, well, this is, you know, this is mine. And that's how I dealt with it. I wrote a song called uh, Bet On Me To Be Alone. And that's how I felt before October 1, you know, 2017. I told my mom, I'll be that guy who goes through relationships. I love relationships. I love being in something. But someone has to understand what kind of person I am. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm, I'm not... This guy who's a nine to fiver, nope. um, I, I can do that. And when I do I it, I do it the best though. Like mm -hmm. I'm the best at my job. I could I'm, not have a boss. But I need, I, yeah. But see, I've, I have owned my own companies as well. Mm -hmm. The clothing line, all the stuff done very well. 31 employees, all that stuff. But it's, it's, it takes a certain, you know, a certain type of person. So mm -hmm. how I dealt with it was this and then that day. And, and so I wrote that song and actually Chase and I are going to sit in here and I'm going to sit and play it and record it and we're going to put it out. I'm looking um, forward to checking it out. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. you're just and, an amazing human being. No, thank you. Thank you. But this is about you guys. <laughs> and I apologize. <laughs> the show is, is about y'all. And um, so like, where did you want to, being an artist like were you always an artist uh so i when i was in middle school i used to draw a lot because i was always grounded <laughs> <laughs> so i was always in my room and i would draw a lot and um there was a point where i just kind of stopped drawing i had some traumatic things happen in my life that really kind of you would think i would have divert like jumped into my art more but it kind of just shut me down. Uh -huh. And then um, my dad always geared me towards more towards like business. So um, went towards that career path, the corporate career path. Uh, I did piercing for a little bit. Um, but it wasn't until the last couple years that I finally got back into art. I was inspired by uh, this guy that I had dated. He who shall not be named. I'm not mm -hmm. saying uh, his we, name. I'm not going to talk about him. Um, but he inspired me to get back into art. And so I did. And uh, throughout my life, I've had a lot of friends who tattoo. Um, my uh, best friend of mine, Lindsay Cadillac, in Kansas City, Missouri, at Oak Street Tattoo. Hi, Lindsay. Um, <laughs> she was a really big. Um, I've had people that I know that pass that were tattoo artists. Danny Yoder in Florida um, had said some inspiring things to me that kickstarted my career. Um, Andy Spade, Ken Dean in Tampa, Florida. There, there's just been Dan Sedano in uh, Orange City, Florida. I've, I've just always have so had- So you're from Florida? I'm from Florida. Okay. Yeah, I just have always had a lot of tattoo artists around me or in my circle that have just inspired me. And I just finally took the chance and okay. just re myself into art. And it's been, it's going great. I'm Good really for happy. you. It's not a coincidence that all three of these women have had traumatic things happen to them in their lives and mm -hmm. ended up as artists. Right. And expression, you know, different expression um, through, it has to be something that is connected to what's happened. Right. It, it took, um, I, you'll take that moment. I don't, I don't, it took I don't that ask moment. that question. Right. But it has to. It's right. not it's not a coincidence that right. they're all doing something. You form were talking of art. about how, you know, it takes the moment or it takes yeah. something somebody says or it takes whatever. And yeah. I finally I finally had that. And it's when I just immersed myself into my apprenticeship. And it just now that I'm doing it, everybody's like, duh. 
it right. makes sense. You and know, you should have been doing this forever ago, but I don't think I would have appreciated it if I would have been doing this then as I do appreciate it now in my maturity and where I am in life. Awesome. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from here. Oh, you are? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been, well, I mean, I, I moved here when I was seven from California, but um, I grew up here and this is home for sure. Oh, wow. My, Nicole is from here as well. She was mm -hmm. born and raised here in Las you Vegas. You don't meet a lot of those. You no. Don't, most mm -hmm. people are no. from uh, the East Coast or California. Mm -hmm. Right. So is there, like, I mean, you getting into it and sharing your story, thank you very much for that and why you did it. And then your specialty, love it. Um, is there, what is it about, like, is there something, because I know that we all have a journey. Mm -hmm. We all have goals. Where do you see yourself? Oh, my. Um, I have very large dreams. I'm Good. sure all of us here do. Um, I, I need to be in charge of my own business, and I need to uh, get out my story. Um, I have quite a few stories. I think we all do. Mm -hmm. um, I think all but, of our, us have been on a documentary. Okay. Yeah. All of us. Like, I'm not even playing. Like, she's been on TV for her, what happened to her. She's going to be in a docuseries. We're going to be on something. Okay. You've been on some. Like, it's kind of bizarre that we all have been on TV like that. It's right. It's crazy. What are, so, what are your dreams so, with your business? Um, just to be successful and to, obviously, if we're, if we're going to get real, it's to wake up knowing that I am known. And maybe that has to do with a feeling of inadequacy or um, maybe it's just because I want it. But I want to be able to get to a level of status where I can, I can meet someone and they will know who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it, whether it be from tattooing or it be from my own story that I'm trying to share and help people with. Mm -hmm. um, so what, be it, it needs to happen. What, what's that story? I'm, I, I don't know if I should say just yet because okay. someday, someday my, a member of my family will, will look back at this and I don't know if I want him to find out this Fair way. Fair enough. So, but, that being said, how am I going to come out with the story if I'm not coming out with the story? Exactly. Know? So, but you know what? You'll know in your time. And that's the thing. You'll you'll know. And and this is a safe place, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing is, the story that you shared already, you know, that's pushing you forward, and you have goals, and you see it. You know, I asked this question yesterday. It was really wild, and I had Nicole look it up because I saw someone performing who was blind. Right. And uh, and I thought, do they dream in color? Do mm. they see things? Is it is it or is it just black? And I started to tear up. I started to get emotional because I was thinking about that. Like you guys get to work in art, in mm. color. People get to walk out of your store, out of your shop with a piece of you on them they're carrying that they're carrying that moment that'll be there forever and you get to leave that and they get to look at it and they get to share it and then i thought to myself these, these people who are blind and they're seeing, i was watching this person perform and be amazing like hair standing up my arms chills made me emote watching them perform and then then that's my thought mm -hmm. wait a minute they're making me feel this way mm -hmm. but you know what are their dreams and when uh, but when they dream what do they see is it in color is it and then she said that they do like if they've lost their if they went blind then they get that but it's not is it's not defined as defined as ours mm -hmm. you know like so really, if they, really if they haven't had vision before that they go blind versus if they off the bat just couldn't see even if they, they know said what color they is do kind of exactly it's said that they do but they don't mm -hmm. what was they don't understand the that guitar in his lap um, um jeff I, mean? I think is uh, jeff healy jeff healy yeah. yes and i think he passed away did he yeah poor guy one of them. from yeah, he was in roadhouse roadhouse so, yeah. exactly roadhouse. he was one of those guys you want i mean he what a what a talent man. yeah and he could write i mean yeah Things that I don't think that if he wasn't blind, he would have been able to accomplish. Right. 
you know? Well, and it's, um, we're all, it's wild. We're all set on the path, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say that I'm a turtle. I got to get a turtle tattoo. I, I painted one. I painted this turtle uh, and then hung it up on my wall and thought, oh, I'm going to get that tattooed on me yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. But, Come and but we'll get it done. thank you. That's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because it's, it's, it's a, anyway. it's a, you know, it's a, it's like a spirit animal mm -hmm. of mine. And that is, I was put on a path. Here's my direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go over, under, around, whatever. That's, it's not, the flow. it's not a sprint. This is the, the chase that you're after these things that you are going after. You're in it right yeah. now. It's about the journey. And it's not the destiny. It. it can't, you can't force it either because no. you can, you can try and get there as quick as possible, but until it's supposed to actually happen, it's really not going to happen. It, even you're not, even the destination is not that there's, you're getting up and still breathing and you mm -hmm. still gotta, you, you gotta want more and go after more and, and you know, enjoy oh, this, sure. enjoy the journey. And, um, I don't want to leave anything on the table, but we do, we, you know, we do have to wrap it up here real mm -hmm. quick, but, uh, uh, guys, I've got a West coast tattoo parlor right here and sticky paw studios on heroes journey podcast right now. I got Raven, Chi Chi, Val and Frank, Frankie, it's been awesome. Frankie Thank D. You. Oh no. On the show. It's uh, what I'm saying is, is there anything that, that you would like to, because there's five of us in the room mm -hmm. sharing stories. So I'm sorry if we didn't touch on anything, but I don't want to leave anything that uh, this is a platform for us to promote the show. I'm mm -hmm. not promote the show, but promote your vision. What mm -hmm. you guys are doing, you're building two cultures, one family here in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Everyone comes into town always wants a tattoo this is a place you can contact west coast tattoo parlor there's two locations but you guys are the rainbow location yep. we are the mm -hmm. rainbow location. okay so now you've met exactly locations. <laughs> exactly like a and, little bit we didn't bring all the artists in right you know. but but i wanted they're to, all very big characters and i i saw you've that. seen that yes, like you know. everybody has a person everyone's a little sure. crazy you know like yeah. a little bit you know but it's fun we have a good time though. a little for the most part yeah <laughs> yeah but is there anything that you would like to leave. I love that you understood the whole Joseph Campbell thing. Oh yeah. Um, you know, me, it was more of a deep dive into the videos mm -hmm. that, you know, like movies are made with that narrative, meaning the hero and that goes through all this all the way down to, you know, it's the all normal about the journey. Scene. Exactly. It's all about the journey and it's all about just that, that realization and just, and comprehending, you know, just really just understanding what you've gone through and learning from it, maturing from it, growing from it, and then being able to go through life and kind of unintentionally help everybody else that you touch throughout right. life. And so that's why I tattoo now. I love it. Yeah. And yourself? You're so deep. I will second <laughs> Look at that you. You're so deep. With, yeah. Um, saying that all of us here are artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are so full of emotions, so so full of inspiration that we just have to create in every way possible and make connections every way possible. Mm -hmm. And For sure. that's what's great. Um, there's also a rebellious spirit too. That's why we're in the industry that we're yeah. in. Yeah. Right. So especially entrepreneurship. That mm -hmm. is yeah. that is a rebel. Like I will not work for anyone else. I, do yeah, not I mean, like well, we are our own ind dope. independent contractors. That's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're all contractors. Yeah. So technically you're already technically, yes. Yes. True. on your way. That's you lady. are your boss. You control <laughs> your hours. Yes. That's true. <laughs> do, you, do you have regulars like regular people that you tattoo that are clients that tend to come back to each one of you? I'm still new in my pipeline having okay. had just started, but I a do have a couple. A lot of people ask for you though. I do like, have people a, lot, a like couple Chi -Chi. repeat customers and stuff, but my books are open. So if go. anybody wants to get some work done, right? please hit me up. But it's there always, you, you know, so a lot, most of the time it's somebody else you're referring, you know, right. I had a great tattoo, so now my friend wants to come in. Mm -hmm. So you might not get that person yet, no, but for they'll, sure. they'll be back around. And I love traveling. So and nobody, that's, and that's nobody you know this now, you can't yeah. stop. No, uh, no, stop of course. Getting tattoos. And I, I asked Raven about her specialty. Is there something that you want to specialize in? Because I know it's new. When I saw your work, it, rem it reminded me of like right now, it's, I'm still it's the intro. New. Yeah, still you're doing new. the. I get so much, so I'm many requests for letters. I'm jumping in on this one. I was about to jump in. Yeah, I was about to jump in. 
that text. Oh my god, her flattering oh, yeah. is amazing. Script I say text. I can't loosely. I, I am humble. doing well with it. I'm very humble with it because there are some phenomenal people in the industry. I don't industry. know why you're humble because you're like I still have so much to legal. learn. So mm, I I, I respect good. where I am in my position so, like, right now, and I'm not trying to say that I know a whole lot because I'm still learning. But so so something like like. Like if I had lyrics, yeah, that that would be something up my alley. Should kill it. I do my color. My saturation is really, really good. I do a lot of blackouts. Um, just anything with color saturation or black. Good saturation. for you for giving yourself credit. Yeah, the, there you these go. girls <laughs> never give themselves credit. It's crazy to go. me because they're like very hard on themselves, right. and they're such phenomenal human beings. And I'm just like, just own it. You're awesome. And they're just like very like don't want to. Like, but I really well, own how great they are. Because I, I still know my place right now. You right. know, I, I I still have so much to learn, and there's so many mentors throughout the world that are going to help guide me, you know, and I just... Okay, Chase is steps. nodding his head <laughs> over I, there. I, this, I, again, I'm, I'm jumping in on this. Yeah. This is such bullshit because she is our top earner. Like, she's for a very long time. I just show up to work. And she just started. <laughs> like, she's... I she's, just show up. She's <laughs> amazing. And so she does not give herself even close well, to Well, now we credit. have Raven and Blanco. Oh, right. love so, them. Yeah, they're great. They'll help me. They'll help me. Yeah. And Blanco's work looks he's killer really as good well. Too. He's yeah. sick. He's sick. Yeah. It's... A, it, the work is insane. I mean, he yeah. has a lot of, like, he's I was just an influencer looking at for a reason. Today. He's insanely good. Right. And he's really nice, and he's very down to earth. He's just a really nice human being. And um, we have a really good group of artists. Yeah, cool people. Cool. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, we have Chase, a good time. Chase, is there something you wanted to add in today? Your camera's not on today. No. Well, also, I don't have any time to add anything in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very he's, good. He's telling us Smart. to wrap it up. It's yeah, over. I got it. Just making sure. <laughs> so again, Brian talked about his yeah. Craft no, oh, you're dude. so good. Shut yeah, up. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad I got to hear that finally. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. You know, thank you. It's horrible. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Her accent is just awesome. I'm going to be going crazy all day. Um, all right, guys. So Chase, thank you so much, dude. Um, again, Raven, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for sharing. Uh, I know the clip I'm using of yours. It was thank you. It was moving. No, I'm not even kidding. Like when I was watching it, it was making me emotional. Um, thank you for re being vulnerable with us. Thank you as well, and th and yeah. for understanding. And it looks like you're quite the leader. You get this vibe. We'll see. You throw out this vibe. I love Let it. Let me tell. I want to say one thing about her. The first time I realized her and me were going to be like real life friends. We're, <laughs> no, like because I love her because she's she acts like she's so like mm -hmm. oh I, I'm not going to get into anything. I'm I'm like a nice girl and everything. And so we were filming because uh, we were trying to put together a TV show, right? Mm -hmm. So we were filming and. Somebody was trying to get into the shot just because, you know, oh sometimes people want to do yeah. that. I'm telling. Um, sometimes <laughs> sometimes people just want to get in the shot. And so um, this lady is just like smashed and trying to get in the shot. And I'm about to lose my mind. I'm not a nice person when I get mad. So you have to like remove me because something could happen. So Chi Chi, <laughs> Chi, -Chi like just goes up on her and it's just like, you need the movie. This is a close set and you got to go. And she's like, or what? I was like, you know, don't make this a problem for she, me, please. <laughs> no, she like, she, no, she I was like, you don't want to make this a problem. She's yeah. like, no, what, you, what she did, she's like, are you really gonna try to make this a problem right now? Like she like lowered her voice right now and she was like right it's up on her. It's all about tone and tonality. Yeah, I love like, it. it was her tone. I she love was that. amazing. I love that. Tone and tonality. Awesome. I told her, I was like, we're gonna be friends because you're a ballsy bitch, but you're like a closet ballsy bitch where you just like well, it. thanks for having us. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like in a nice way. Yes. Yes, but, but um, oh, and I wanted to thank you. I want to thank you because like the last time we were on the show and I cannot name the name because it's uh, there's I know an NDA. It is. Yeah. There's an NDA in place. So, but I'm an artist for an amazing gallery, and the last time we came on here, uh, you know, yes, we, we ran talked a clip. about certain people. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about people. Well, that person saw and actually called my There's gallery. About a trash can. Yeah. Stop. No. Stop. Yeah. No. Trash oh, you got to go back and watch the episode talking. or the clip to kind of know <laughs> what we're talking, talking about. Talking. So, I'm get it. anyway, it was very so, helpful. It was very yes. helpful. Uh, and you're very welcome. Thank and you. And thank you for being here. I love you guys. West Coast Tattoo Parlor. This is the rainbow location mm -hmm. but then there's a las vegas location raven chi chi frankie d <laughs> and val thank you guys so much my name is brian that's chase this is a hero's journey podcast thank you Dream, and i believe it's coming around it's coming around to me